Holla ballers, what's going on? It's Preacher. And so a lot of you have been getting contact with me, especially after we started the revival of the Standout series. You'll also notice this video is titled Basics. Uh, so I'm splitting them up so we don't get confusion. We have such a widespread audience now, it makes sense to do that. How do you stand out? And some of you get confused uh, with things like, well, I could stand out in like the pre-made group finder because my item level is so high. I stand out on a damage meter because my damage is so high. And this is the kind of stuff that will help me, right? No, no, that's not going to help you that much at all. It might gain the interest of some people, but often people who are basing your performance on item level and just raw damage in some sort of weird mythic scenario, they're not often the kind of people you really want to be spending long-term time with because those aren't the things you look for when you're looking for a good player, right? So the whole purpose of this is that you are hopefully... Trying to find your way into guilds, trying to get people, uh, some make meet some new friends with like-minded ambitions and like-minded play levels of where you're at right now. So hopefully I can go through some things that actually make you stand out. Ever since I started the Cataclysm Guides in 4.23, something like that, uh, one of the big things that I always pushed about standing out, even back then, is you need to stand out, is that most of the time, things you do that stand out People don't notice, so it's kind of contrary to the name, but it is the name I've given it anyway. <laughs> but it's contrary to the name, is that most of the little things that you can do won't get noticed. But it will be noticed in another way, which is why you do stand out, okay? So bear with me on this. People will notice when they play with you, whether it's PvP, dungeons, questing, whatever, that things go better. <clears throat> That's as simple as standing out is. People will not notice maybe the individual little tiny things that you're doing throughout an encounter that make it better. But what they will notice is that it was better. And when they play with you, things just run smoother. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can do a thousand tiny little things in a dungeon. A thousand tiny little things in a boss fight encounter that are ever so slightly going to make life easier for everybody else. And they don't realize it. Okay? That's kind of the purpose of it. You're more aware of the game. You are comfortable doing damage, right? So, so many people, you've got to think about this. So many people are still stuck staring at their bars. And you might still be there too. And that's fine. But eventually you'll get used to it. You do it every single day when you're doing world quests, when you're doing dungeons, when you're doing whatever. Is that you see the same buttons over and over again. So at a certain point, you don't need to be looking at them as much. So you start observing the game world a little bit more. And then you start to take advantage of the fact that you're being observant and maybe you're starting to understand more how your class relates to boss mechanics and how you can counter it better. And then from there, you start making decisions on the fly that are good decisions. Really good decisions that other players aren't making. And now you're starting to move into an area where you can stand out. And what you'll find is that your dungeon groups consistently go well. And your raids consistently go better. And what you're hoping to do is other people will realize that if they invite you to the group, and also the great thing about this is if you play well and you get to stand out and you do these little things, it doesn't matter who you are socially. A lot of people are we're doing the misconceptions is people feel the need that I've got to be super social, I've got to talk to people all the time, and I've got to be backwards and forwards, I've got to have this huge conversation before I can actually get into content. No, you can be dead silent, you can be a fucking coffin, right? You can be a coffin, you can be whatever you want to be, but people will always, always prefer to play with people who are going to give them a good run as well. Always, 100% of the time, people want to play with people who are going to give them a nice, smooth, faster run than taking somebody else. All the time. So, this can be as subtle as being the interrupt master. Ha ha ha, after last week's video. Yeah, I get it. As subtle as being an interrupt master. But I'm going to show you a couple of really easy examples. One of, like, an obvious an obvious style thing that people notice and go, oh, that's, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool, that's helped us out, where people have noticed that it should have made easier. And I'm going to show you one super tiny little change. And the only reason I bring this up is it was the only one that I'd done in a long time where someone was like, did you do that on purpose? And I was like, yeah, and they were like, that's really cool. And I was like, nobody ever notices these things. So I thought it was kind of cool that someone did spot what I did in my raid. So we'll look at something really silly, uh, just brambles on scenarios. A lot of people struggle with brambles. If you've been raiding at all or you've done, um, is brambles even on the LFR version? I'm not sure. But brambles is interesting because it's a mechanic of the fight that add-ons can't track. 
Okay, so these brambles appear, they fixate a player, and they chase them around, and they leave behind a trail. And that's the that's the gist of the whole thing. But it is the primary mechanic of scenarios, so there's no doubt about that. If that one mechanic was changed, like, to include add-ons, the whole fight would be nullified instantaneously. So... It's a visual cue. That instantly adds quite a high skill factor for a lot of people. So if you're one of these players who's still focused on, like, pressing your DPS buttons, or maybe you're super aware of the damage meter for some god-awful reason, then you are going to probably fail to this mechanic because your attention is not focused on the game world. It's focused on trivial things that hopefully you should be getting more comfortable with day by day by naturally just playing the game. So you have a couple, few different ways of dealing with it, which is... You can either not notice it because you're looking at other things and therefore you get hit by it and your raid leader shouts at you because it's like, can you pay attention to this thing, please, please, please? Or you'll be like the mid-tier kind of raider, which is like, you notice it and then you just start running. <laughs> like, fucking beelining somewhere. Or you can be somebody who's going to stand out, which means not only are you comfortable with the fight, you're comfortable with the mechanics... And you can actually use your class to manipulate how brambles work uh, in such a way to make them significantly easier to handle. So when the guy who runs straight away, he's going to create like a big line across Cenarius' room, right? And that's a big line that everybody has to deal with because there's a lot of movement on that fight. So if you create a big line, if you just run in a straight line, sometimes it's unavoidable because they'll come charging from the other side of the room. There's no way to tell who they're targeting. But if you get one near you and you just sort of beeline away, you create this giant line. One that's more difficult for people to clear because people have to clear the debuff, uh, clear the ground, you know, rogues and stuff. Uh, also, it takes up way more surface area. Right, so you're taking up far more of the room than necessary, and plus it's just a huge inconvenience for because people have to run around it or jump over it or whatever it, the case might be, uh, which is just super annoying. Oh, you could be the third type of raider who goes, "Oh, brambles are on me," and you kind of use your class in a way. Yes, I know I'm a mage; it's easier for me, but every class has a way of doing this. We've witnessed them all uh, of manipulating it so it takes they overlap, they double up, they're in a space where they're never going to offend everybody, and what happens then? Bear with me here. So if you get your brambles like I'll do in this clip here and overlap them way off in a corner, what happens is, one, those brambles are nowhere near the big area of the room where people have to move around. So your movement becomes far easier. I do less damage when I do this, but because of this change in movement, raid DPS goes up significantly because people aren't having to hop and overstep each other and do all sorts of crazy things. You see how this compounds? These are the kind of things that will compound upon each other. And overall, for the next, well, until the next brambles come up and someone might screw it up or someone might do it well, everyone's going to have a much easier time. Those are the kind of things you can do that are very noticeable. These are noticeable ideas of standing out, right? People are going to see that happening. Now let's look at a subtle one. So I said subtle ones can be interrupts and no one really realizes who's doing it. Uh, subtle ones can also be purges. If your class is capable of dispelling something, that shows one, you're aware this is this mob or this boss casts something <laughs> that needs to be removed, right? So a good example of something obvious would be the shield that the big sentinels get in Halls of Valor. Yeah, that big yellow shield. Uh, but usually it's more subtle than that. They usually gain like a hot or something along those lines. That's a heal over time if you're not sure. So... One, you're aware this ad, ad casts something. Two, you are able to tell when an enemy gains a buff that's a magical buff that you could do something about. And three, how quickly it's removed, right? So I could be doing something, and we'll use Cenarius as an example here. We'll see the uh, sisters, the Twisted Sisters, uh, they cast a heal on themselves, a heal over time. And you can, uh, it's up to the melee to interrupt that. Ha ha ha, last week's video. Uh, it's up to the melee to interrupt that. And if you see, because uh, I'm on my mage, if you see that cast go through, my reaction is to counter that then by purging it straight off. And that makes the fight significantly easier, right? But you could do that through dungeons. You could do that through all sorts of other places. People might not even notice. People might not even notice, but it's okay. Because they're having a better time than the, the last group they did where somebody didn't notice. And that became a big problem, right? Why are these mobs healing all the time? These kind of things. So in this little clip here, this is so tiny. Like, I might have to play it twice. Um, we're taking brambles again. So this is brambles taken from two different perspectives. This is brambles taken from an obvious perspective where we manipulate it. This is brambles where it's not going to target any of us. But look at what I do here, right? And this was a conscious decision is the brambles are spawning to my right hand side. I'm very close to where they're gonna spawn. So brambles start moving. I need time to tell whether they're coming for me or not. So I don't wanna be stood right next to where they spawn, right? Cause they're just gonna go, oh, we want you, uh, got you. Um, so what I do is I move off to the left. Now at the time to my left is a moon king called Frankie and a warlock called Cloggy. And they're stood to my left as well. So I'm moving left and they're stood there. So what I do is the natural movement I do lands me very, very close to Cloggy, right? Really, really close to the Warlock. So, 
I'd move again. And it seems so silly, but think about what I actually did here. I thought about where I stood and I thought, no, I want to move two steps forward. And I literally moved probably two yards forward, right? Something silly like that. And the reason I do that is you now notice that I've created an even spacing between the Moonkin, myself, and the Warlock. Now, why did I do this? Standing on top of each other with brambles is a really bad idea because they, they might chase one of us. Which one? Don't know. We're both stood in the same position. So that means at least two of us have to move to find out who it's going to be, right? Instantly, that's a bummer because that's at least one of us losing DPS, right? By putting myself in the middle, what I've done is created three separate pathways the Brambles could take. So as soon as they start moving, if they're going slightly in front of me, I know it's the Moonkin. If they're going slightly behind me, I know it's the, uh, the Warlock. If they're going right through the middle, it's me. It's that easy. It's that easy. Just that little tiny change. No one's going to notice. Well, someone noticed this one. But no one's going to really notice that if you're doing that like 50 times a fight. Right? But it's those little differences that made life that little bit easier. And that's what it's all about. It's creating an environment where life's a little bit easier. Just a tiny bit easier for everybody. And each little tiny thing that everybody does makes the overall fight really easy. And then suddenly people start to notice that when we have these players and these players and these players and you guys in there, things get better. That's what I'm talking about with standing out. Item level is not standout. Because as soon as you get to like a real uh, raiding environment or a, a dungeon environment, guess what? You've all got the same item level. It doesn't mean shit. It really doesn't mean anything once you hit that point. It doesn't mean anything because you're all the same. All the loot's being distributed equally. You're all the same. Your DPS might be tremendous in a five-man heroic when you're way over geared for it. But once you hit like a raid environment, guess what? You're all probably about the same. Right? There's only a couple of standout classes at the moment. You're all about the same. You're all in the same place. That's not the stuff that's going to get it cut. And generally speaking, that's not the stuff that's going to get you kills. That's not the stuff that's going to get you noticed. All these kind of things. So I hope that helps clear up what I mean by standout. The things you should be starting to look for. Some very simple tips to finish up then. One, notice that when I'm doing this uh, stuff where you've got things like brambles. Notice my camera is not looking at the boss. Contrary to popular belief, staring at the boss doesn't increase your DPS, right? If that boss, as long as you know, because you're comfortable with the fight, that that boss isn't going to do anything to you. He's not going to do a damn thing to you. He's being tanked. He doesn't do anything directly at me. I don't need to look at him. I don't need to pay attention to that. Everything I need to do damage is elsewhere on my screen. It's in via add-ons or it's just on my buttons. I don't need to be looking at there. So use your camera. So please, for the love of God, turn off that auto-follow nonsense. Smart pivot or whatever the fuck it is. Fucking going to get you killed, man. So bad. Uh... Second of all, don't be obnoxious about this stuff. If you do little things, don't be like, did you see what I did there? Hey, check me out. No, don't be a dick. Just do all these little things and work on it. Be comfortable with your class. Be comfortable. You're playing your class all the time. You really are. You might need to work on things like keybinding. You might need to work on things like DPSing while moving. These are all might be little areas you need to work on. There's plenty of videos on my channel to help you work out with that. But be comfortable in your class so that you can be more comfortable to not look at your buttons and stuff all the time, right? That's why we use items like Tell Me When and We Chorus to notify us of important things for the rest of the time. We don't need to look. I don't need to look if my fireball's ready. It's always ready. I don't need to look at it. It's chill. I could spend all that time looking at something else. Paying attention to what's going around me. Taking it chill, taking it easy. If you do feel like you're distracted by things like damage meters, turn them off. Turn them off while you're in combat. Yeah? Just turn them off and let it fly. Get comfortable with your characters to the point where you can start taking in more of the game world. If you're not sure whether you're ready, try it. Just start paying more attention to the game world. Try not looking at your buttons. Right? Get yourself some notifications. Use my UI or whatever it might be. Uh, I know some of you are struggling with my UI. Just update it. Use Curse Client. Use something like that. Just update it. My UI is working 100% fine. I will release an updated version, but you're going to have to keep updating anyway. Uh, but do all these things so you don't have to pay attention to all these little niggly things, right? Try and get your key binding sorted. Do those kind of things. And just take in the game world. And just try and pay more attention to what's going on around you. All right, guys. I hope that helps out. I hope this helps you get into groups and guilds and friends and stuff because a lot of you are saying it is and I'm really excited for you. I'll see you again. Bye-bye.